Howdy folks, Stu here from Sacred Arts 84. Welcome to our sitting room in beautiful, spooky Fortaventura. In today's video, we're going to talk about inspiration. So, what is inspiration? Well, simply put to me, it's whatever moves you. It's whatever makes you want to get up off your arse and do something. And there's tons of things that inspire us every day, but for this video, I'm just gonna talk about what inspires me to make art. Now the number one inspiration I have to make art is of course my family, my three kids and my beautiful partner Shifra. I want to build something with them and something for them so that's the main reason I drag my ass out of bed in the mornings and sit right here for hours on end and create drawings, videos, whatever it is I need to do. Some days are definitely better than others and over the last two years of all this pandemic bullshit, a lot of those days can start feeling a bit like Groundhog Day. And that's why I want to talk about inspiration in this video, because it's easy to lose and hard to find again. When I started this journey into trying to make a living from art, I had a very clear idea of what it was I wanted to do, but because of reasons, Things have gotten a bit off track, or wildly fired the fuck off track, whatever way you want to look at it. I'm sure a lot of you have felt what I'm talking about. I buried my head into my work and hoped that quantity would be the answer. Just draw and draw and things will get better. Nope. So I tried changing up what I do. I started looking at trends of what other artists were doing and tried that. Nope. It made me even more frustrated with my work, with myself and with the world in general, which is no good and no way to live. So, something had to change, and thanks to the process and some help from the people that I love, I came to the realization that I should have been doing what I set out to do all along, which is share the things I love, the things that inspire me, and hopefully help inspire some inspiration in someone else. And there you go, look at that face. That face inspires me every morning, and probably one of my absolute favorite videos of she, or favorite, photos of she forever. So in the spirit of Halloween and horror, I'm going to share with you a couple of drawings from two of my all time favorite horror characters. And the first one is Candyman. I first saw this movie back in around 96. Uh, so I was about 15 and I remember being completely blown away by the style and the character of Candyman. I fully expected just a straightforward murder and psycho, but the movie, along with the sequel, Farewell to the Flesh, showed a character that didn't deserve to become what he was. That he did in fact have some justification for being so ruthless and so unforgiven. If you've never seen the movies, I would highly recommend checking out the first two at least. The fact that the actor Tony Todd, who is awesome by the way, made the effort to flesh his character out in a way that made you rethink the motives and reasoning of a straight up supernatural murder and entity still inspires me to this day. To turn fear into wonder is a hell of a thing. Something that I definitely want to explore with my original artwork. Something that I've been holding back on because of fear. Will people like it? Will people buy it? Um, a friend of mine recently gave me the advice to go back to what it is I enjoy, go back to what it is that brings me joy. And I've always, always been a massive movie geek. So I started rewatching some of the old movies that I love, and to be honest, it's really helped me remember some things. Music as well. Anyone who knows me knows that I adore 80s music, and that really got me thinking about the nature of nostalgia. Why is it that we feel such a need, such a pull, to go back to simpler times. I think the reason we crave that nostalgic feeling is because it brings us back. It reminds us of the time when we heard that song or watched that movie, whatever the case may be. And in that moment, it inspired us. A lot of us, I think, grow up and get shoved out into this world and get caught up in the machine and forget just how important inspiration is. It's been trademarked and slapped on a Hallmark card and the idea seems to have drifted off into the ether of once upon a time. Well, I say balls to that. I remember that feeling. I remember dreaming and I want to dream again and I want you to dream again. That feeling reminded me of something that someone once said to me. Do what you love. You can't be the only person that's into the same things that you're into. I'm glad that popped back into my head because it reminded me to just go with my heart. Draw the images I'm drawn to. Stop thinking of it as a business and go back to thinking of it as a passion, as fun. 
It reminded me to stop being afraid of something that hasn't even happened. It doesn't exist outside my head. Fear breeds fear. And I honestly think that the only way to break that cycle is with passion. Do what you love. And in the end, if it doesn't work out, well, at least you've spent your time well. I'll admit it's definitely hard to balance doing something you love as a way of making an income. I mean, we're still waiting for that part. But I think in the meantime, it's important to use this time to explore what it is I'm supposed to be doing. All that from a drawing of Candyman. Which I really hope you like, by the way, because the original is up for sale on our brand the brand new websites. Talk about that in a bit. So, a couple of weeks ago on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, but not on YouTube or TikTok, which you can find us on all of them under at SacredArts84, we asked you to pick one of three of my favorite childhood characters, uh, horror characters. Uh, there was Ash from Evil Dead, there was Michael Myers from Halloween, and there was, of course, Freddy from Nightmare on Elm Street. I was a little bit sad to see that poor old Bruce Campbell got so little love. I mean, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, no. Bubba Hotep, nobody. Briscoe County Jr., shocking. Anyway, uh, there was a lot of love for Freddy and Michael, which makes it all cool in my book anyway. And it was pretty much a dead heat, so I went with my heart and I picked Michael. Oh my God, I love this movie. I love the soundtrack. The style, the suit, the mask, oh, the mask. Oh, hands down the best horror mask ever put on film. Anything that's come since has just been trying to recapture that in my super expert opinion. When I watched that movie as a kid, even then I didn't see a knife wielding maniac. I saw an unstoppable nothing. I mean, there's no emotion on that face. There's no soul behind those dark holes for eyes. There's no pleading with that. And I say that because, is he human? Is he? The fact that this movie came out in 1978 and he's back again in 2021, still able to murder and go mental, means he's either not human or has a savage team of personal trainers and nutritionists, which, in fairness, in this day and age, he probably does. Anyway, again, another huge inspiration to this day, not just the character, but John Carpenter himself. If you don't know the story behind the making of this movie, then you really need to go check out some special features because what he made with what little he had is a massive inspiration. If you're not familiar with John Carpenter, then you should also check out his movies. He's, he's made quite a few of my all-time favorite movies. Halloween, Big Trouble in Little China, They Live, Prince of Darkness, Escape from New York and LA, all of them made with feck all. Just an idea, some passion and the balls to see it through. You look anywhere nowadays, even back in my day, and the world is still pushing the idea of having to be special or have talent or that having all these toys and gadgets is all you need to be a success. Uh, did you not draw this on a big fancy tablet? Actually, balls to that too. You just need to be you. Plain and simple. Break that cycle with passion. Actually, I wonder did anyone ever think to just give Michael a hug? Stabby hugs. So that's what I'm going to do. This drawing is as good a place to start as any. I was definitely tempted to go in and do loads of blending and make it super realistic, but I like the painterly look to this. Incidentally, there is also a very limited number of prints of this painting available on our brand -de brand new website, so if you love Michael as much as I do, and you like this drawing as much as I do, then grab one quick, because just like home store more, when they're gone, they're gone. So on that note, folks, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, and I'll see you soon. Cheers, it's the feckin' website. Sure if my head wasn't screwed on, it'd be gone, huh? Yes, the website, www.sacredarts84.com. We are so happy to finally be able to share the switches and talk about it. Uh, here's where you'll find some of my artworks, uh, some of which you'll only find on the website, along with me following my heart. I love t-shirts. I wear t-shirts, so I'm doing t-shirts. There's something I've always been passionate about, and while my boxers may be falling off me and I've like two pairs of good jeans, I've always got lots of awesome t-shirts. For the folks who love Fort Aventura, I've done up a couple of designs for the hot rock that might interest you. 
Also, if you're super cool and you want to really help me out and fly the Sacred Arts 84 flag, we have this 84 logo t-shirt. And then we have this jellyfish wearing headphones in all its 80s neon awesomeness. Why? Because I love neon colors, music, jellyfish and retro 80s headphones. There are more designs on their way and in the works, so make sure to keep an eye out on our ridiculous amount of social media pages uh, for those. Website is also where you'll find my art prints and any original drawings that may be up for sale. And we're really looking forward to see where this part of the journey might take us. As for the videos here, you can expect to see a lot more art like this. I had this discussion with Shifra. It's one thing to show you all drawings of people you don't know or recognize, but we think it's more enjoyable if you recognize who or what I'm drawing. And I still take commissions for portraits and stuff like that, which you'll also find over on the website. On that note, folks, if any of you have any suggestions of anything you'd like to see me draw, then please leave it in the comments here down below, on Facebook, on Instagram, or Twitter, or TikTok. All links are in the description below, and on screen, and in your nightmares. If it moves me, then you never know. But for now, just be you, let the story tell itself, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video.